In this example, we have a cable modem connection, so we're going to configure automatic configuration DHCP. Next, we have the optional settings for host name and domain name. These options may be required by some ISPs, and when required, the ISP will provide the information to us. Our connection does not require this information, so we're going to leave it blank. MTU stands for Maximum Transmission Unit. It is used to set the maximum packet size that can be sent out on the Internet. We have the option of selecting Auto or Manual. Auto will allow the router to determine the maximum packet size and is the default setting. The manual option can be used when we are having issues with a protocol and want to control the MTU size. The range of values you can put in here is 576 to 1500 bytes. Up to this point, we have been going over the configuration of the outside interface, the side of the router that is connected to the Internet. In the next section, Network Setup, we are going to configure settings associated to the inside network. The inside network is considered to be the blue ports on the router as well as the wireless interface. The router IP is the IP address associated to the inside network. This is the address we use to communicate to the router itself for configuration purposes or it is used by hosts to send information to the Internet. When a host on the inside network needs to send information to the Internet, it will send it to this address and the router will forward it to the next router on the Internet. Here we have the address of 192.168.1.1, which is the default IP configuration on Linksys routers. We are going to leave this as it is. You should only change this address if you are using this networking addressing somewhere else on the inside network. In most cases, you will be fine. The subnet mask tells the router which part of the IP address above is the network section and which is the host section. The 255.255.255.0 tells the router that the first three octets of the address above is the network section and the last octet is the host section. We have multiple options for the mask as shown here. The value shown here tells the router the network section is somewhere in the middle of the last octet. We are not going to cover address masking here. For most cases, you should leave the mask as it is. The URL address allows us to configure a URL that can be used to browse the router instead of using the inside IP address. Let's copy the URL shown here and put it in our browser link. By pasting the URL in our browser, we get access to the home page of the router. This is just another option for accessing the router. Next, we have the DHCP server settings. This option allows the router to function as a DHCP server to the host on the inside network. When DHCP is enabled, host connected to the inside network will be assigned an IP addressing and other related information for accessing the network. If this option is disabled, then each host on the network will need to be configured statically. The start IP address is the first IP address that will be assigned to a PC or device on the network. The maximum number of users determines how many hosts may be assigned an IP address by the DHCP server. The default is 50. We are going to leave it at this value. In most cases, this will be fine. In a public setting, such as a coffee shop, we could increase this to 100 or more if needed. Next, we are shown the IP address range available to the router for DHCP assignments. In this case, we have addresses 192.168.1.100 to 149 reserved for DHCP use. Other addresses not listed here may be assigned to hosts statically.